Hello traders, Gary Wagner here, just about 2.30 in Honolulu, 7.30 in New York. It is Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the island, February the 2nd, 2018. And this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. Tremendous meltdown in U.S. equities markets following a jobs report that came out better than expected. Gold trading lower on the day off about $12.70, closing at $13.35.20. Silver closing off by about $0.60 cents at $16.55, all in light of a stronger U.S. dollar, up about a half a percent, $89.04. And as we said, a plummeting down, down 665 points, closing at $25,520. Now, Bitcoin actually closed at $84.90 in both the CME as well as the CBOE, a net loss of about $600 on the day. Well, traders, it finally happened. Today, following a robust, better than expected jobs report, we saw some wheels turn immediately into motion. One, the dollar began to strengthen and bonds began to strengthen. The belief that strengthening bonds could influence the Fed to be more aggressive sent stocks tumbling. Now, the majority of analysts have been expecting a correction and in fact saying that a correction would be healthy. I couldn't have said it better myself and therefore I pulled an interesting quote this morning by Dyer who simply said that a correction only feels healthy until you get one. Today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed off by 665 points, closing at 25,520 points. Total damage this week is about a thousand point decline in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We are looking at a weekly chart and on this weekly chart, I have put a basic Fib retracement that in essence goes back a couple of years, starting when the market was just above 15,000 up until these record tops. A shallow correction, which would be a 23% retracement could take the Dow Jones Industrial Average as low as about 24,000. Below that is a 38% retracement at 22,000. However, I do not believe we will see anything other than a shallow correction. When you consider that this market has just been on fire since 2016, we had a couple of periods of time in which the market had these extremely shallow corrections, one here, and one here, I call this one the Christmas sell-off, and it occurred just about December 2015. The market's trading at 18,000, and then retraces back to just about 15,000. These are the deepest corrections we have seen over the last few years. So the fact of the matter is, if U.S. equities begin to correct next week, we could, in my opinion, based on our technical studies, see the market go as low as about 24,000. And that, of course, is based upon a 23% retracement. Now, as I said, we are looking at a weekly chart. Let's go ahead and take a look at the daily Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the interesting thing about looking at our daily chart, of course, we can see the significance of today's downside drop. When we look at this particular FIB retracement and look for activity that occurs around these different areas, what we can see is that there is a loose correlation between the market either finding support as it did here at the 78% retracement or resistance at the 50% retracement. We're also beginning this retracement, as I said, back from February of 2016 when the market said 1500 up until these tops. So it is a rather large data set which should supply us with reliable numbers in terms of support levels if today's sell-off is the beginning of a correction. And traders, as far as the precious metals go, a pretty strong sell-off in both gold and silver with silver losing 3.5% and gold losing approximately 1% on the day, settling at 13.3520. That puts it down $12.00 and 70 cents and yes we currently have an active trade that we put on earlier this week we are long gold basis april at 13 49 and a half roughly this area we placed our stop at 1330 
Now, if we take a look at today's low, today's low came in at 13.30 and 10 cents. So effectively, the stop missed us by a single tick. It doesn't get much closer than that. Also, I did send out a special trade alert this morning recommending adjusting that stop to 1324. And I wanted to spend a couple of moments to give you the rationale behind why I recommend adjusting the stop. Although we did not get stopped out, my sense is that we do have support right now between 1330 and these bottoms right in here, and they come in, of course, at about 1325. And so it is for that reason that I want to place the stop just under this price point, because here's my sense. We saw gold and silver sell off dramatically today due to two factors. First, a strong US dollar. But a strong U.S. dollar provided only part of the sell-off. In other words, about seven parts strong dollar and nine parts selling. There was a lot of selling that went into the market. Typically, when you get these meltdowns in U.S. equities, there is a flight to cash. And traders, as well as investors, will tend to liquidate multiple assets to make sure they've got the cash on hand, whether it's to cover a margin call or simply to cover losses that they've experienced in U.S. equities. My sense is that should equities continue to sell off through next week, that will be an extremely bullish factor for gold, and I would expect gold pricing to move higher and then again challenge these former highs at about 63 on the way to $1,400 per ounce. If we get the kind of retracement that I believe is quite possible in the Dow going back to 24,000, we would certainly see a pretty nice upside spike in gold as well as silver. And that's the reason that my recommendation was to adjust our stop and to maintain our current long position in gold. And traders, next, I do want to take a look at the U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar up six tenths of a percentage point, not only gaining back all of yesterday's drawdown, but actually closing slightly above that in terms of a straight candlestick pattern. It is an engulfing bullish. Also, the engulfing bullish is coming at a critical point in the dollar index. We've talked about this all this week as well as last week, but the actual critical level that I'm referring to is the 61.8% retracement that falls in precisely at 88.31. No doubt we challenged that this weekend and over the last two weeks, the lows have come in just at or above that particular price point. I'm also on record stating that if we get a solid break below this particular price point, we really could see the dollar index itself go into an accelerated free fall and move just above 84 on the dollar index. We'll have to see how the dollar reacts next week. It's attempting to find some sort of stability or support, but we have seen that activity before, before moving to either dramatically higher pricing and forming a base and then spiking up or in periods in which the market sold off. Traders, lastly, I do want to take a quick look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin in a virtual meltdown, but it has been in a meltdown for the last couple of weeks with a tremendous decline today. In fact, over this last week, it has lost roughly $4,000 in value. We are looking at Bitcoin Cash as it reflects to the dollar. If we look at this baseline that comes in roughly at $1,000 up until these highs, just at about 20,000 and where this market is currently residing at, which is 87.94, we can see that we have now had this market retrace anywhere between 50 up to a 61% retracement of the former climb. And traders, we are looking at Bitcoin futures. This off the CBOE, we can see that settlement price on futures is 84.90. So it is below the cash market, lowest closing price on record ever since Bitcoin futures began to trade last month. My sense and target is currently at about 7,500 should the selling continue into next week. The best quote that I heard 
today regarding U.S. equities is that everybody is comfortable with a correction until one occurs. And that's exactly what we saw today. A jobs report that came in better than expected, sent bonds to the upside, sharply higher dollar, and that brought in the fear factor that the Fed would be more aggressive and actually raise interest rates quicker than anticipated. That's what set this whole ball rolling. The question is whether or not this was a one-day wonder or the beginning of a well-needed correction. My sense is that we will probably see lower pricing inequities as we move into next week's trading, which should be bullish for the precious metals markets. We'll have to see. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.